Yes, we're stuck with clear skies yet again here in Texas. Some of the return flow starting to develop. We can see that on the surface map. And there it is on the surface map. South winds throughout much of the central U.S. and the dew points quite low. 23 at Shreveport, 19 at Oklahoma City, and 18 at DFW. We don't often see that with south winds. But the moisture is just to the south. That's where the dew points are above 50. So we should see those layers becoming more moist. In the southeastern U.S., even drier. Look at that 19 degree dew point at Atlanta. There's that sounding from Atlanta. You can see that the dew points drop off significantly and just 3,000 feet off the surface, they're running about minus 30 Fahrenheit. That's just incredible. And you go all the way up to 20,000 feet and it gets even drier down to the minus 50s and minus 60s. That gives us a precipitable water amount of 0 0.07 inch. And that's got to be close to a record. And that very dry air mass being driven by this 1032 millibar high, which has Canadian and Pacific origins. And due to the subsidence, the sinking motion within that high, that's bringing the drier air down towards the lower levels. In the central plains, we have this lee side trough set up and you can see the temperatures at denver a nice warm 61 62 up there in the nebraska panhandle and 50 at bismarck this is kind of a warm air mass and definitely part of the tropical sector even though it's not 80s and 90s let's take a look out in the western u.s we have a new Pacific system moving inland. This is not as strong as that one that we had back on Monday. The pressures in that system, you can barely even make out the lows themselves. There's one right there. No closed contour and no closed contour in Montana either. However, within that trough, we do have a front end. Looks like in California, down below the front, it looks like in the valleys there's trapped cool air. You can see the fog there at Merced, 56 degrees, and very likely overlying that is an inversion and tropical air. So at first when I drew this map, I brought the fronts all the way down here, and then I figured, well, that's probably the trapped air in the lower levels. And a quick check of scooties in the San Joaquin Valley, where the fog is still holding on you can see the warmer air aloft. So if you go from here and go down a mix of the dry and moist adiabat, the moist adiabat's not on here, but uh, would run about like that, that would take you down into the lower 70s or right around 70 degrees, which definitely categorizes the air mass as tropical. Let's take a look out in the Pacific, big old high, 1028 millibars affecting the west coast, so it looks like a dry start to the weekend. Moving up north, we have this new blast of polar air coming off the Alaskan interior, producing some snow all the way into southeastern Alaska. You can see 33 degrees with snow there south of Juneau. I don't know what station that is. And then we go further north. We can see that it is still quite cold in Alaska. We've got minus 16, minus 14 there in the interior. And it's kind of weird. You compare that to the North Slope where it's 12 degrees and you go down south and you get minus 15. So that shows you some of the very severe cold air residing along the southern Alaskan coast. In the Canadian Arctic, this air mass looks to be right about where it should be this time of year. Minus 22 at Eureka, minus 9 at Resolute, and looks like around Cambridge Bay, it's about minus 2. Out there in the Atlantic, not very much going on. Rather quiet pattern, and typically we get a very deep Icelandic low. Nothing like that for today. 
In fact, the only dominant feature is this system coming out of Labrador, producing some inclement weather there in Newfoundland. You can see the dew points there are up to about 52, which is quite moist. That's due to a combination of the Gulf Stream offshore and very strong warm air advection coming up from the south. So somewhat tropical in the nose of that warm sector right there. In the wake of that, some very strong cold air advection coming across Quebec into the Maritimes. This afternoon, Maine, Montreal getting snow squalls. That's partly due to the very cold conditions aloft. Let's go up to 300 millibars. Well, we're going to do 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. We don't have 300 millibar temperature for some reason. But that right there is the core of the cold air. Those are temperatures of about minus 35 Celsius at 500 millibars. That's very, very cold. Pull up a SKU-T there for Maine. And that shows you a classic appearance within the cold core trailing the polar front. Steep lapse rates, humidity in the low levels. Don't always have that, but we do this time. And if you get some heating, which we do, the sun shining on that ground where there's strong air mass modification taking place, that's a ripe environment for cold core convection. And we're getting that in the form of snow showers today. And that's them. You can see that in between the cells, there is heating areas of clear skies, and within these low-topped cumulus clouds, shallow cumulonimbus, you get some heavy snow showers. Not enough to produce much accumulation, but it is certainly interesting weather. No temperature records to speak of today, so we're not going to cover that. Temperature is quite seasonable across much of the country. But for tomorrow, here's what we have. Temperatures will be coming up to 81 degrees at Childress, coming within a few degrees of the record. Also, a warm day at San Francisco coming up to 65. And on the other flip side, temperatures falling to 31 at Wallops Island, a little bit cooler than what they normally experience. Here's a sneak preview for Sunday. A warm day along the California coast, 87 at Camarillo, 85 at Brownsville, and 82 at Tampa. And you can see no records throughout the rest of the country. No record highs, no record lows. However, we are looking at a pattern shift coming up over the next week. So starting out for this afternoon, this is the hemispheric 300 millibar jet stream patterns, the long waves, and this shows a fairly zonal pattern. There's some of the medium scale troughs right there. I'm not really sure where the long wave trough is. Maybe this is it right here. And you can see a well established vortex in the Canadian high Arctic. Another thing that you'll see looking out in the Pacific, look at the colors. We've got pinks and light reds, which corresponds to about 90 to 100 knots. And I'm going to just kind of throw this forward about three or four days and let you see what evolves. Look at that. Much faster flow developing by Sunday. And then going into next week, a continuation of that fast flow, and it gets even stronger towards the 28th and 29th. So the Pacific definitely getting active. This vortex over the Bering Sea, that's throwing us into a positive P&A pattern. And on the other hand, out in the Atlantic, look at that. There's an omega block. I don't know if you can see it, but that's it right there. It resembles the Greek letter omega. That's a blocking pattern. You can see these vortices trying to dig underneath it, not really doing very much. And you can see how around the 24th, 25th, that blocking pattern just kind of locks in and things stagnate out there in the Atlantic for about a good week. So the takeaway from that is our attention will shift out to the Pacific 
very energetic out there. And down on the East Coast, a lot of these waves moving off the East Coast will be stalled by the downstream blocking pattern. And also, I don't see much amplification of these waves. It's very rippled. I would say medium amplitude waves. Only at the very end here do we get a pretty good wave breaking off. But this is just kind of a pattern that we see with a wave breakup and maybe the reestablishment of a strong zonal flow like what we see here. So I think we're not really done with the storm systems on the West Coast, probably more of that. And I'm sure British Columbia is not. Yeah, see that right there. Uh, they've been in a lot of trouble over the past week. Uh, you probably read the news. The rail and road lines are cut off, and that's bad news for the interior towns. They're pretty hard hit there, and that's kind of snarling a lot of the supply chain in that area. Anyway, that's a different subject, but it looks like it's just going to continue with a lot of this inclement weather and the possibility of atmospheric rivers migrating into that disaster hit area. And that's certainly not something we need to see. So let's see exactly what we're looking at. This is the Eastern Pacific looking at IVT, the Integrated Vapor Transport. We'll run that forward. This will illustrate the atmospheric river. It looks like one heading for British Columbia, Vancouver Island, maybe a little up to the north there, around the 21st, 22nd. So this is Sunday night. Fortunately, it looks like weak impacts for the Vancouver and Seattle area. They get the dry side of that. Here comes the next one down the pipe. This is going to be the 24th and 25th. That's Wednesday into Thursday. That's pretty potent there. Got 1,000 IVT values, and that takes aim on the Seattle and Vancouver area. Looks like that may go a little bit to the south there, at this, the way it looks at this time. However, in the Columbia River Basin area, IVT values about 250 to 400. Here comes round three. Up, oh, that's the end of the run. And this one I might be a little bit more concerned with. That's going to be towards the 28th, 29th, which is going to be the weekend after this one. So just kind of an endless chain of storm systems hitting the Pacific Northwest at two to three day intervals. So I'm going to cheat here and take a look. Yeah, that looks like a lot of rain and snow in the mountains for the Saturday after this one. There it is, quite a bit of rain and snow being forecast over that weekend and then finally moving eastward by Sunday. So we'll keep our attention focused on that. For the rest of the country, let's run that back. Well, what we're going to see here over the weekend is a frontal system, probably a dry one, coming through the central Rockies and the central plains edging southward into Oklahoma and Texas by Sunday. That'll reinforce some of that cool air and the stronger cold air advection way up there in Minnesota and the Dakotas. Now we do develop a wave along that front right there. So some rain expected in the Ohio River Valley. And that's some pretty impressive cold air advection in the Great Lakes. And this being November, that means we need to be on the lookout for lake effect snows. Looks like already some there around, I think that would be Grand Rapids, Sault Ste. Marie, and that should extend all the way down to Buffalo. Looks like they're getting some, and down towards Rochester and Syracuse as well. Then going into, let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, a repeat of what we have today. Very similar pattern. Looks like the California area getting a weak storm system moving through. Looks like the southern stream will be active for late next week. That's a frontal boundary right there through Texas with very potent tropical air flowing northward. I would expect dew points are probably 50 to 60 degrees there. And you can imagine the interaction with the front and the 
up glide over the back of the front. So some bad weather <laughs> likely there in Texas next weekend. And then that moves on off to the east, maybe some storms there in the southeastern U.S. We'll be watching the Vancouver-Seattle storm, of course. And look at that, more cold air coming into the northeastern U.S. And that is the proverbial broken record. Seems like the past 10 years has been hot in California and cold with northwest winds in the northeast U.S. You could probably, you could probably forecast the weather for... January 24th, 2022, according to that pattern. And that's probably about as far as I want to go with this upper level flow being broken up into small vortices and a strengthening zonal component. I think there's going to be a lot of uncertainty past the 180 hour point. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on it. And I think that is a good stopping point for this afternoon. Looking at the supporter mailbag, no messages to report, and no new patrons. So I think that'll do it for today. Hope you all have a great weekend. Take care. We will see the supporters back here on Monday, possibly on Tuesday. That's kind of up in the air right now. And then we'll just do our regular video on Wednesday for everybody else. Take care, and we will see you then. Bye-bye.